Hey, what's going on, guys? Today is December 4th, 2015 in the United States, and it is the 65th anniversary of the heroic sacrifice of Jesse Leroy Brown, and he passed away sacrificing his life for his country in the Korean War in the Jongjin Reservoir, or you can also call it the Chosin Reservoir. And I'm going to use this anniversary and going to use this time to promote the book Devotion by Adam Makos. I personally have met Adam Makos and attended a book signing of when he came to the African American Military History Museum in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And I really admire this book and it goes into a lot of detail of the lives of Jesse Laura Brown and Thomas Hudner and it's not boring details and it doesn't just touch on their military service. It touches on their character. And let me give you an example. Okay. In Lux, Mississippi, where Jesse Leroy Brown grew up, outside of Hattiesburg, him and his brothers used to play in the creek. It was rural Mississippi. Not much to do. But when they would walk back from the creek, there was a bus full of white kids, and these white kids would throw things at them and spit on them. And, you know, just, just one time, Jesse Leroy Brown got a stick and hit one of the kids who was throwing things and spitting things. And the bus stopped, bus driver stopped, got out, big burly white guy was the bus driver, and who dipped and chewed tobacco. And just Lord Brown was not mean, but he stood his ground. He said, sir, every day, all the time, this happens. This bus comes through and throws things and spits at people. Mainly he was talking about him and his brothers. And the bus driver gave Jesse Lord Brown his word that it wouldn't happen again. And that was the end of it. And the reason I'm saying this is because um, Jesse Lord Brown, that's what he did. He stood his ground. He didn't hold a grudge. And he moved forward. And the reason that he was like that was because he had two parents that were devout churchgoers. John Brown was a deacon in a 40, it was about a 40 family member Baptist church. And never touched alcohol. And Julia, before she married John Brown, she was a teacher and she was also a missionary. And she was a missionary that went throughout Mississippi and preached. And this was during a heavily segregated time during the United, in the United States, but specifically in the Deep South. And now I'm going to talk about the character of Thomas Hudner now. Thomas, when he was in junior high, he was friends with everybody. And then he was friends with this particularly nerdy kid. And the kid was a good kid. He was just a little bit nerdy, and people picked on him, but Thomas didn't. And there was this guy named Manny who did pick on this kid. And Thomas stood up to Manny. He challenged Manny to a fight after school. Well, Manny told Thomas, don't worry about it. It's not going to happen again. The fight didn't take place, and Manny didn't pick on this guy again. So that was the character and the graciousness and the integrity that Thomas Hudner and Jesse Leroy Brown both had. And the first time they met, the first the book touch goes into detail, the first time they met is Thomas Hudner extended his hand to Jesse Leroy Brown. And Jesse Leroy Brown it wasn't that he was reluctant to meet Thomas Hudner, but the reason he reluctantly extended his hand is because it was very uncommon in Mississippi at that time for a white guy to stretch out his hand and say nice to meet you to to a black guy and Jesse was gracious for that but at the same time it wasn't something he was used to and when they first shook hands Jesse noticed Thomas Hudner's Naval Academy ring Thomas Hudner graduated from the United States Naval Academy he was in the US Naval Academy during World War II so technically he was a World War II veteran on paper but he was in the Naval Academy at the time. Now, and it goes into details when they first started their naval service after they became naval officers. Uh, Jesse Laura Brown always wanted to be a naval aviator. Always. Thomas Hudner did not have any interest in flying at first. He, immediately after graduating from the Naval Academy, he became an intelligence officer. And he really monitored the Chinese, con the Chinese Civil War between the Communists and the Nationalists. And he really saw firsthand how brutal Mao Zedong and the Chinese communists were, um, which is one reason he really believed in the mission that him and his fellow aviators were doing in the Korean War, trying to protect the U.S. Marines from the Chinese soldiers. 
And Thomas Hudner also had information on the Soviet military at the time, and the book goes into details that the Soviets had a 2.6 million man army versus the Americans had only 600,000 people in their army. And the Soviet Air Force had 9,000 planes versus the United States Air Force 3,000 planes. And, but the U.S. had an advantage with the Navy, okay? There were, the U.S. Navy had 164 vessels versus the Soviet Navy had 147 vessels. And the Soviets did not have any aircraft carriers. And the U.S. Navy had aircraft carriers and they had 5,000 Navy and Marine Corps planes. And the book goes into detail over this. Um, Jesse Laura Brown and Thomas Hudner, when they started flying, they started flying F-8F Bearcats. And the Bearcat was designed to intercept Japanese kamikazes during World War II, but it was in existence and took and played a role after World War II. But then eventually they switched to the Corsairs, and the Corsairs were very difficult to land on a carrier. They were nicknamed the Ensign Eliminator or the Widowmaker. The Ensign is the lowest rank a U.S. Naval officer can have, and they were also called the Widowmaker. This is a very good book. I highly recommend it. And hope everybody's doing well. And hope everybody has a good weekend. It's Friday, December 4th. Hope everybody's doing well. Take care. God bless and bye-bye. Bye-bye.